you set up one of these amplifiers, there's three or four things that you, you should do and do it in the proper order. The first and the most important thing is setting up the trim control. After you do, you start with the EQ flap, by the way, and all the voicing filters off. Then you, you set the trim, which adjusts your input, matches it to your bass. Then you set the voicing filters, then you do the EQ, and then you start, you can start working with the amp and you'll turn things on and off as you, as you learn, you know, better about what you want. But it's a good, we're just going to give you a starting place. So let's start with the trim control. First of all, what is the trim control? All amplifiers, including ours in the past, have a switch here. And it's, uh, it says active or passive, and it, what it does is it throws in a pad into your input, either minus 10 or minus 14 dB. So if you've got an active instrument, you, you put it in active, and it puts a pad in there that reduces your, your input gain. The problem is you've got 10 or 14 dB range, and, but it doesn't allow you to exactly match your instrument and playing style to the amplifier. So by making that control variable, and we call it trim, then you can actually dial this control in to get the exact level that's just right for how you play, how your instrument behaves, you know, and what the amplifier needs. So the way you do it is you start with the control dimed, and you play, and you see if you, and you, and you see if, if the clipping light flashes, which is located down here, with a passive bass, I imagine there are passive basses that are hot enough to make it clip, but uh, a Fender Jazz isn't going to do it. So if you just, you know, you, if you hit it super, super hard, I guess you can make it clip, but it doesn't matter. It's just how you'd set it. Just dime it. And you make it clip. You can make it clip, but that's okay if it just flashes when you super hit it hard. You can see with a passive bass, it's very difficult to overdrive the input. And normally on these amplifiers, you just leave the trim control dimed. Uh, now we're going to show you what happens with an, a hot active bass. We've got a Zon here. We'll see how that behaves. All right, so Force is instantly put on a, an active bass. It <laughs> happens to be a Zon. It's a very, very hot instrument. And we've got the trim control dime, so let's see what happens when he hits that. The clip light is lit all the time, and you can hear the, the overdriven input. It actually breaks up pretty decently, but it's still, you don't want that to happen. So I'm going to gradually bring back the trim control while he's playing. If you just flash quickly when you're hitting the bass really hard, then you're at your optimum. So you can see now we've adjusted the amplifier's uh, input stage to match this bass, and we've got it exact. That's why we're using a variable control. Uh, once your trim is set and your, your instrument is matched to the amplifier, then you can move on to the next uh, settings, which I like to go to the voicing filters next, and they they you know they'll set the basic sound of the amplifier. Then the last thing is you fine tune it with the equalizer. So we'll start with bump first, and what bump does is it adds a bloom to the low end, around 60 hertz, and sort of fills out uh, your uh, the room really kind of gives a really rounder, bloomy kind of a sound, and it's great in a dead room like this in a hot room. Maybe not so good. You might get your bass might end up being kind of boomy. So that's why we make it an option to turn it on or off. Okay, that's fun. The, the next option is contour. That boosts the highs and the lows and drops out the mids. But since we boost the highs and the lows at the same time that we drop out the mids, the SPL sound pressure level seems about the same. It, it seems about the same volume to your ear.
that's contour. The last feature is pretty common on amplifiers, presence. And, uh, and presence is really good to use if your horn is gone or you don't have a horn. Uh, it, it adds that extra little edge to your, your uh, woofers and, uh, you know, to get that sound out there. Or you got dead strings, it's nice to use. So we've gone over the trim, the voicing filters, the last thing is the equalizer. And this is a four band equalizer. It's what's called serial uh, variable Q. So it's got four stages serially connected. And is especially the mid controls, when you adjust them positive or negative, the Q changes. When you're cutting, it's a high Q, and the Q gradually get, gets lower and lower as you boost them. And the idea there is uh, if you boost a mid-range and it's high Q, it sort of sounds like a tin can. It's kind of ringy and a very unpleasant sound. When I designed this equalizer, I wanted to be able to set it just about any way you can and not have it sound weird. And that's what we've accomplished here. It takes a lot of parts to do that, by the way. A typical equalizer has maybe five or at most ten parts. We've got about 50 parts in this equalizer. So nobody does this but us. That was each control adjusted individually. I'm going to play around with some combinations of controls while he does this next lick. That's a rough idea. Uh, of course, when you play with it, uh, you'll get, come up with a lot of different uh, uh, mixtures. And the point being, though, I, I adjusted this equalizer to the extremes, and we got a dramatically different voice going, but it didn't sound weird. The other thing we haven't talked about yet is the overdrive section. And uh, the overdrive section in this amplifier is modeled after the 800 RB. However, it has some more controls. You know, we have uh, a thing called an edge control that controls how bright uh, the uh, overdrive sound is. It's got its own level and it's got its own uh, uh, drive control, which determines how hard you drive it into overdrive. And the 
point of the overdrive is we're, we're trying to emulate what happens with a, uh, a tube amp, uh, you know, going to its ultimate limits where it starts to break down. It's not really an effect like, uh, you know, a typical overdrive pedal it doesn't do that. And there's plenty of pedals to do that, but nobody really focuses on what we're trying to do, which is, you know, uh, the sound of an amp breaking up. Okay, we'll take a few more minutes and we'll go over the, some of the uh, rear panel features and then a general discussion of the build quality. So you got on, on the back, there's a lot of, lot of information here, but basically you got the power cord input, a power switch, um, a, a ground lift for the uh, DI, and then the DI, of course, and then the pre-post switch for the DI. Pre means before the equalizer for the DI signal and post means after the equalizer. Uh, we got these four quarter-inch jacks. One's for the foot switch, the tuner out, and send and return jacks. On the end, we have two speak-ons for the speakers, and this switch is an impedance switch that sets the output levels for the power amp to match them to the load that you're going to drive. This amplifier will put out 800 watts into uh, 4 ohms, 2 ohms, and 2.7 ohms. So a 4 ohm load is 2 4 ohm, I mean a 2 ohm load is 2 4 ohm cabinets. So you put the switch on the bottom for that where it says 4 plus 4, that means two four, a 4 ohm cabinet in each jack. If you're driving an 8 ohm cabinet and a, and a 4 ohm cabinet, which is very popular combination, like a 115, which is 8 ohms, and a 410, which is 4 ohms, then you want it in the middle position, which says 4 plus 8, that's a 2.0 uh, total load. The amplifier will put out 800 watts into that load. And then if you're just driving straight ahead 4 ohm uh, load, you put the switch in the top. 4 ohms or above, you put the switch in the top. It'll put out 800 watts into 4 ohms. And if you go up from 4 ohms, let's say to 8 ohms, then it puts out half that power. It puts out uh, uh, 400 watts. 800 watts into 4 ohms, 400 watts into 8 ohms. Then, uh, so just to close up here, uh, I want to talk about some of the uh, construction features of these new amplifiers. First of all, they're all aluminum. There's no, no steel. And we've been using all aluminum in, in our heads since the 800RB, which was all aluminum. It's kind of novel. It's a more expensive material, but guess what? It never rusts. Uh, we use a finish on them that's a black anodized, hard anodized uh, finish that will never discolor or fade. It's just going to stay looking great as, as long as you take care of the, of the amplifier. The writing isn't uh, screen printed on. Uh, it's laser etched into the uh, anodizing. Uh, so, you know, when you, when you silk screen, they wear out, they chip or whatever. Uh, but this uh, laser etched in, it's there forever. It's never going to uh, discolor or peel or, you know, scratch off. And we do that laser etching right at the front of the line. Uh, all our parts are assembled and ready to go down the line and we have the first thing they go into is the laser etcher and we laser etch these, this stuff, and the material on the front panel. That's all laser etched. Um, then secondly is the general construction uh, of this all aluminum. You can see it's finished all the way around. I mean you look at it from the back or from the side, it looks beautiful. It's, you know, most amplifiers in uh, 
in this industry, you have a nice front panel, looks really pretty, and they stick a tin box on the back, uh, usually out of some kind of thin sheet metal steel or something. So, you know, it looks, it's passable, but it, it isn't beautiful from every aspect like this thing is. Um, finally, the last thing uh, that is important is the fans. The fans here are temperature controlled. So when the amplifier is cool and you're not playing it hard, they don't run. And uh, as you play it harder and harder, the fans will run harder and harder. If you're playing in direct sun, they'll run harder. And the, the nice thing about that is uh, if you're in a quiet setting like in this studio, you don't want the fans running. That's an extra little bit of noise, even though they're extremely quiet. Uh, and uh, unless you're playing hard, you know, they're just not going to run hard. And that the really benefit of that is it keeps the dirt out of your amplifier. You know, there's all kinds of dust and stuff that gets sucked in uh, to the amplifiers when the fans are running. But since they don't run all that often, you can open up one of these amps that are years old and they look clean inside. If they ran full speed all the time, they, they just become a dust collector. Our interconnections, we don't use cables to interconnect our audio signal. It's all done with multi-layer circuit boards and gold on gold connectors. So what's the beauty of that? Well, a multi-layer circuit board includes its own shielding for all the uh, wires, so you don't get any extraneous noise, and they always behave the same. The boards are bolted in place, and there's never a problem with a cable getting misplaced inside the amplifier and creating problems. And then the connectors are all gold. So they connect gold to gold, gold to gold. And the beauty of that is they never corrode and they never give you a connection problem years down the line. Now, most connectors in amplifiers, unless it's a military product, are tin. And tin, over time, uh, does slight little corrosion. And the, as the tin connectors vibrate, they build up little corrosion dams. And eventually, a few years later, you get these interconnection problems. We run into it into our old amplifiers, and it's the main issue that happens after five or 10 years. So um, we've eliminated that problem entirely with these new products. Yeah, lastly, the thing to talk about is how we build these things. Years ago, when we first started this company, we built everything in-house. We had our own sheet metal shop, our own wood shop. We even made our own transformers. Um, today, uh, as the years went by, we started outsourcing uh, those jobs, those processes. Uh, for the last five years, though, we've been bringing them back in-house. So today, for example, we do all the laser printing on our products. We actually manufacture our own drivers. You know talking about the cones and the voice coils here. We put them all together on our assembly line. And we uh, assemble our own circuit boards. We have a Panasonic surface mount line. And uh, so all the boards are, are uh, assembled right in our factory, which uh, gives us control over the quality. 